Hi there, today I'm going to be going through Marketo executable campaigns and this blog post I'm just after releasing is the foundation for this video where I explain the difference between executable and request campaigns in Marketo and I give you examples of when you'd want to use one versus the other. And then I also explain the parent campaign token context and again give examples of when you should use this and when you shouldn't. And then finally at the end of this post I go through creating and cloning Marketo executable campaigns using the API. And it's these last two things that I'm going to focus on in this video. That is creating and cloning Marketo executable campaigns using the API. And I want to give you an example of using the parent campaign token context. So that's what I'm going to dive into next. So if the parent campaign token context parameter is set equal to true, then all these different token values will either be taken from the program containing the parent campaign, or they will be taken from the parent campaign itself. Otherwise, if this use parent campaign token parameter is set equal to false, then all these token values will either be taken from the program containing the executable campaign, or they will be taken from the executable campaign itself. So I know this still might be confusing. So that's why I've built two programs in Marketo to illustrate this even further. So I've created this parent campaign, which just triggers off a change in first name. And it's only going to be applied to my email address because I don't want it affecting any other leads. And then in here, I'm going to first request this executable campaign with the parent campaign token context set equal to true. And then I'm going to request it with the parent campaign token context set equal to false and see what the difference is. So there's nothing special about the smart list of this executable campaign. Since there are no additional filters added here, this means that the executable campaign will execute any time it is requested. And then in the flow, I've just got a series of change data value steps, which will show the effect of having the parent campaign token context parameter set equal to true or set equal to false. So in this example, we can see we're bringing in a my token, we're bringing in the campaign description token, we're bringing in the program name token, we're bringing in the member status, and we're also bringing in the name of the trigger. So going back here, we'll see for the parent program, we've got the my example token set equal to parent token. The program name is 01 parent program, that's obvious. Then I've added myself to, with the tyronatelnext.com email to this parent program in the visited status. And then the campaign description has been set equal to this is the parent campaign description. And I've already run this campaign by changing my first name here. And we can see the result in the activity log where we can see that. So this first example here, where we're using the my token, the my.example token, this has been set equal to parent token from this program. Then we can see this is the parent campaign description has been set from the parent campaign. Then the program name token. So just going back here. Then the program name token has been populated with zero one parent program. The member status has been populated with visited. And this is because, as I showed you previously, I've added this person to the 01 parent program in the visited status. And then finally, this trigger name has been set equal to the first name parameter because the trigger of the parent campaign is the data value changes trigger and it is triggering on a change to first name. So that is what's populating the trigger name token that we see in this flow. So 
this runs first. This is where we have the parent campaign token context set equal to true. And then as I show here right away afterwards, we're going to call the exact same executable campaign, except we're going to set the use parent campaign token context equal to false this time. And when we do that, I'll show you what values we should be expecting. So in the child program here, I've set my example equal to child token. We can see the program name is 02 child program. I've set my member status in this child program equal to converted. And then I've set the campaign description for this executable campaign to be equal to this is the child campaign description. So then we can see what the effects of that were over here. So we can see that when we run through this first change data value flow step, this dummy field is set equal to my.example, which in this case, as I showed you, is equal to child token. And then the dummy2 field is changed equal to the campaign description, which in this case is going to be the campaign description from the executable campaign itself, which is this is the child campaign description. Then the program name token is going to populate with 02 child program. And the member status this time is going to take the member status from the 02 child program. So that's why it changes from visited to converted here. And then finally, the trigger name. This is actually an interesting point where since this is an executable campaign, it doesn't have a trigger. So when we try and use a trigger name token value, it doesn't have a trigger to pull this value from. So what it actually does is it defaults to using the trigger name value from the parent campaign. So that's why in this final step, it changes the dummy field equal to first name. So we can see here, there's no trigger. There's no trigger in this executable campaign. So it falls back to using the trigger token from the parent campaign, which is the exact same as before, which is just first name. So that's an interesting point to note here about the fallback. And this example here just shows you the effect of setting the parent campaign token context parameter equal to either true or false. So I hope that makes sense now. If you have any questions of this, please let me know. And for the next part of this, I'm going to go into cloning or creating executable campaigns using the Marketo API. Before diving into creating and cloning executable campaigns in Marketo using the API, I want to point you in the direction of two resources that will give you a solid foundation. The first of which is lesson three of the Marketo API crash course. This lesson shows you how to interact with programs, campaigns, folders, and tokens using the API. And this will give you a solid foundation for the two API requests I'm going to walk through in the next two minutes. These two requests, the first of which is creating a smart campaign using the API, and the second is cloning a smart campaign using the API. Both of these requests are in the Marketo REST API Postman collection that I've created. And this collection contains 100 plus pre-configured requests. So if you want to get these requests emailed to you so that you can just import them into Postman and start using them immediately, then fill out this form on the Marketo API Quick Start Guide, and I'll email you a JSON file that you can import into Postman and then start using all these requests right away. I'll put a link to this blog post in the description of the YouTube video, or you can just Google Marketo API, and this will be one of the first results that appears. Let's dive into Postman now and go to the create smart campaign request. And you'll notice that there is an is executable parameter here, and I currently have it set equal to true. So this is just going to create a new smart campaign in this program with this ID. And that is the ID of this parent program. It's 4619, as we can see in the URL here. And again, I'll restate this because it's important. I'll go through these API requests at quite a quick speed, but if you want a gentler introduction to making these sorts of API requests, then I highly recommend checking out 
the Marketo API crash course and lesson three in particular. So going back to Postman, we're gonna create a test campaign in that program I just showed you. And if I omit is executable and I leave it out, it's just gonna create an empty smart campaign. So if we see that here, it just creates an empty smart campaign. And as you might already know, there's no way to convert a smart campaign to an executable campaign once it has been created. So now I'll show you what happens if we, if we enable the is executable parameter and we set it equal to true. Sorry, we already have a smart campaign with the same name, so it's giving me an error. We're just gonna make this test campaign two, hit send. So now we can see that this campaign is properly set up as an executable campaign now. That's great. And then the next request we're going to look at is the clone smart campaign request. And again, the smart campaign we want to clone, we're gonna get the ID for this smart campaign from the URL. And the important thing to note here is that if we omit this is executable parameter, even though we're cloning a smart campaign that is already an executable smart campaign, if we leave this parameter out, the newly created clone campaign will not be executable. So we'll see that here. And I'm just gonna change our program ID to this program ID, which is 4619. So we're just gonna call this clone campaign. So we've got the is executable parameter here is disabled. And when I hit send, we see success is true. But then we but then when we go to Marketo, we see that even though we cloned this test campaign too, which is already an executable campaign. Since we've set is executable, this parameter is missing. So since that parameter was missing, the newly cloned campaign is not executable. However, we can fix this. And if we set is executable here equal to true, and we say clone campaign two, we'll now see that the cloned campaign is actually executable as well, which is what we want. So that's a quick summary of how you can create executable campaigns using the API and how you can clone executable campaigns using the API. And again, if you want a gentle introduction on how to make these API requests, then check out lesson three in the Marketo API crash course. And if you want to download the Marketo API Postman collection so that you can start using those two requests I showed you right away, then go to the Marketo API quick start guide that's linked in the description of this YouTube video. Thank you.